and establish connection with uh, our reporter Ishan Mani, who's been tracking all the development ever since the report of this gun battle has uh, come to light. Uh, we do know how the entire nation woke up to the grim news of the loss of uh, three of our brave hearts. And we also are given to understand that uh, in Mohali and uh, also in Jammu and in uh, Panipat, the last rites of our brave hearts are being conducted. Now, the anti-terror operations in Anantna continue. We had seen early this morning at about 11 a.m. how there were grenade launchers and also the explosions that had been escalated by the Indian Army. They did see possibly some sort of an action uh, at uh, the vantage position where the terrorists are holed up. They had sent out drones to actually ascertain whether the presence of terrorists is still there or not. And after ascertaining that, we'd seen an escalation in the operations. And there you can see uh, some more visuals that are coming out. Uh, these are uh, older visuals of the loss of life that's been reported due to the gun battle, due to the infiltration bit of the terrorists. Three of our brave Jawans, an army colonel, a major, and a Jammu and Kashmir deputy superintendent of police who lost his life because of the encounter. My colleague Ishan now is with us on the broadcast. Ishan, the situation as of now, what is it? Uh, well, we haven't heard gunfire from quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Earlier, there were uh, RPGs, uh, machine gun, mm. and other, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, other sophisticated uh, guns that were used to target that particular location where the army feels uh, that uh, they still have uh, these militants trapped. Uh, but we haven't seen any retaliation uh, from the other side. Uh, but uh, they have been cornering that area, and there are army men surrounding the, this mountain peak from uh, most of the sides, uh, which possibly indicates that the fact that the army and the police that was told yesterday that the area has been encircled and the name that police gave was of Uzair Khan who they mm. claimed was a local of Kogarnag and uh, was the one who was part of that particular group which attacked that particular police party and the army party which was going up after they received input about presence of these militants. Now as of now as a colleague Akash is saying that uh, one of the army personnel is missing mm. and uh, you know one soldier is uh, you know injured and uh, three already we know have come to their injuries uh, but yes uh, operation is very much on even if you look at me uh, look at this particular uh, road uh, which leads to the operation site is completely closed, it's blocked. The army has started using uh, their drones and then PTZ camera of JNK police is the sophisticated vehicle is also stationed there. And uh, the area where this operation is taking place uh, is just adjacent to this particular road. I'll ask my Vijay Bashir loan and pan and show you the exact area where the operation is going on. Uh, this is the area where we have been hearing uh, gunfire and it's the same area where the army has been targeting with their RPGs and they have been trying to, you know, attack at a particular point position. Uh, there are drones mm -hmm. which have been used and yesterday we also saw uh, that apart from the drones uh, that uh, they also used uh, uh, a drone which was equipped with a gun. So that gun was used to uh, you know shoot at particular target around mm -hmm. that particular area uh, and uh, but we haven't seen any retaliatory action from the other side but yes uh, police is believing that they still have people trapped in this particular area. One has to see that if they will be able to finish uh, this operation or call of this operation today uh, because uh, it has been now the third day of the operation since it's going on. Uh, uh, we have seen that uh, after that particular, uh, you know, encounter which took place ab above that mountain range, uh, maximum number of security forces have been pushed into service in this area, and the use of technology is also there given the fact that the drones and uh, those kind of drones which are equipped with uh, guns, which have guns mounted on them, are also there. We have seen uh, senior officials, including ADG, police, DG, uh, also on the ground along with the army's uh, 15 core commander. Uh, they were here briefing and getting a first hand account of how the situation looks like at the moment uh, but uh, the village is in complete silence people have not moved out much only those people who have essential duties or uh, need some essentials go out and then come back mm. and uh, there is this road which is completely blank and the traffic has been halted on this road right uh, you know uh, Ishan we were also talking about one army personnel who is still missing uh, we understand because of the sensitivity of the situation, it is not advisable to give out a name yet. But do we know the, uh, the rank of the army officer? 
Uh, well, no, not uh, not as of now, uh, because army has been tight-lipped about it so, uh, because of the operation is going on. Hmm. Uh, there aren't much details which have been divulged by the security forces. Uh, one, because of the fact that the operation is on and they don't want to give out any operational details <laughs> which can be uh, dangerous for the security forces operating here. Uh, but the fact that the casualties that the army has received, including uh, one colonel who was heading the 19 RR, which is uh, looking after the operations in Kokarag area, and apart from him, then a major who had received Sena medal uh, and uh, you know apart from him a deputy SP Himayu uh, who was also a young DSP in operation mm -hmm. in charge of this area. So yes uh, you know army hasn't taken such casualties in a very long time and this is something uh, where uh, they will need to focus on that uh, militants are once again uh, using mountains and caves, natural yes. caves along Peer Panjal, yes. south of Peer Panjal particularly, Punch Rajori and now uh, these things may be also true for Kashmir because two such mm. incidents have unfolded. One in Kulgaon where uh, these militants came under attack and second uh, is here uh, in Kokarnag where we have seen what has unfolded so far. Right, Ishan, I'd request you to stay on with us. Uh, you were just mentioning how the terrain is very, very difficult. We have managed to on CNN News 18 access the terror game plan that has been decoded before us. These are small operational groups that we are looking at uh, who have in fact been responsible of carrying out in and out operations. Now, let's break down the points one by one. This is small operation group like I mentioned, operations being carried out out in subgroups of just two to three people that's how small this entire target these are the terrorist outfits that are carrying out these operations and that insurgents bid into India through the line of control now one local terrorist acts as a guide that's point number one that is how they go about getting into the Indian territory the local terrorists is well versed with the area even as we are looking at newer routes that come in from the porous Nepal border, even from Punjab, the local terrorist is well versed of all of those routes. Now, if we take a look at the other aspect, the terrorists, uh, in fact, go ahead, take shelters in the caves, in that mountainous terrain. And that's why the security forces are finding it increasingly difficult to ascertain where are they exactly hold up because of the terrain and that's why the use of the drone to actually get a sense of where exactly can these terrorists be located. One local contact helps with the provisions. They of course need food supplies and that is where the locals come into play. The police is not getting any tips from the locals in such a case because most of the locals, even the OGWs are supporting the people who have come from the other side of the border to carry out these terrorist operations in the country. Earlier. We are given to understand that the terrorists would deal at gunpoint. But what is happening right now? Now, the terrorists are paying handsomely for the service. They have money in their hands and that's why they are getting these services from the locals, whether it is uh, through food supply or even a route map. Now, because of this, local contact never informs the security grid. They are not helpful. They are not informing the Indian security forces. And that is the least amount of help that the army could have looked at, but that is not coming from the locals. Drones are used to deliver drugs across the border. There you can see drones being used. That has been an established fact. That is also another important aspect. Also, the local contact collects the consignment. All of that work is given to the person who is the least amount or he would not be, in fact, he would not be as significant as a terrorist who's coming from the other side of the border. He would blend in and that's why his role becomes crucial. Drone collector gets the share of the drug money. Again, money is uh, the one that is exchanging hands and that's why the work is getting done. Tactic is used by terrorists nowadays. This is the new way that they are functioning. They are well-trained terrorists. They are using forest area now. The Kokonag area is heavily forested and it is dense and that's why nabbing them becomes difficult. Jawans are now using similar tactics to counter. Let's see how much of that is helping the security agencies as it has gone beyond 48 hours that this gun battle rages on and the encounter and uh, the, the going out, out of drones 